Hello and welcome to Getting Started Hearing Instrument Testing. There are two main purposes for test box measurements in audiology clinics. The first is clinical measurements. These are a record of frequency response in the hearing aid user settings. They're a quick reference for measuring the performance of the hearing aids and a helpful guide for other professionals who might be working with those hearing aids. The other main purpose of test box measurements is to perform technical measurements. These help you gain knowledge if the instrument is working as it should. You can check against the manufacturer reference sheet, also known as the spec sheet, and you can detect faults which cannot be heard by, li by the listening check. These all form part of very important quality control measurements. To perform hitbox measurements, you need a sound treated test chamber and loudspeaker. A coupler microphone and 2cc coupler or ear simulator. A coupler adapter. There are different styles of coupler adapters which we'll look at later on. And the reference microphone. The reference microphone helps to regulate the stimulus level. So looking in slightly more detail. Here you can see the reference microphone and now the coupler microphone. This is the microphone that's actually picking up the measurements coming from the hearing aids. Mounted onto that you have a 2cc coupler. You may also have an ear simulator. Mounted on there is an adapter. Here you can see the HA2 adapter also referred to as a BTE adapter. A different style of BTE adapter is the BTE-L. This is designed for power and superpower hearing aids, avoiding excessive leakage or standing waves. There is also the HA1 adapter. By using a small amount of acoustic putty, you can mount a custom hearing aid onto this coupler adapter. For slim tube and receiver in the ear style hearing aids you can also use an adapter. This is a silicon sleeve which firmly and correctly holds the receiver or slim tube in the correct position in the coupler. There are two main sets of standards that are applied in the hearing instrument world the ANSI S3.22 and the IEC 60118. Both of these standards set out a series of parameters which cover the testing conditions, the equipment needed, the different stimuli, different procedures, tests and the tolerances. Before any hearing aid is sent out from the factory, they are checked and measured against these standards. So although testing a hearing instrument in a test chamber is an essential step in many stages of the fitting journey, it's most commonly performed when the hearing aid is initially delivered to the clinic, as issues may actually develop in transit. This could be due to weather, temperature, or just the nature of transit. However, once a hearing aid is in the clinic, there will be many other points at which test box measurements will be made along the hearing aid journey. So not just before the first fitting, but also as a more accurate process than listening to checks with Steticlips. This is especially important if the audiologist feels that their hearing may not be reliable enough to notice any faults or distortion in the hearing aid performance. They are also commonly performed before and after repairs and also as accurate record keeping and for the reference of other professionals. Today in getting started hearing, it, hearing instrument testing, we'll be covering the technical measurements, battery drain measurements, hearing loop system measurements, 
how to accurately measure slim tube and receiver in the ear hearing aids, and remote microphone or FM system measurements as well.